Hello, this is Jan from the Fuzzy Duckling, and this week we are going to tackle another flamingo project. And this will be something totally new for the Fuzzy Duckling. Many years ago, I dabbled in watercolor. And you know, I just really didn't seem to get too far with it. That was actually in the days before um, that you could get on the internet and that you could get all these fantastic tutorials and find out all kinds of information. The only thing available to me at the time was to go to the library and get books about watercolor. And I did a little bit. I think watercolor is just beautiful and I loved watercolor pictures but I was never happy with what I did. But just recently I decided, you know, it's time to get back into watercolor. So we're going to have some projects coming up in the next few months that are strictly beginner watercolor pictures. So I do not claim to be a professional with watercolors, but they're an awful lot of fun. And I have watched a lot of videos. You can go online and find all kinds of videos about how to do this on YouTube. And I suggest if you want to learn to watercolor, you do that. I just have one complaint about many of them, not all of them, but many of them. Since it's usually a professional giving you this information and they're limited on time, they tend to feel like they want to give you a lot of information in just a few minutes and it becomes very overwhelming. In fact, that was what the books used to kind of do to me when I had to take out books. It would show a very, very professional picture and give you a few tips on how to do it. But never enough tips to actually do it if you were a beginner. It was just, it was like handing a, a beginner piano player that is in a book where you learn the first five notes, C, D, E, F, G, and giving them a concert piece and saying, now play this, you can do that. And that's very discouraging. And you may find that if you go watch videos and tutorials that many of them they move so fast and give you so much information that you become overwhelmed and you think I can never do this and you quit. So the goal here on the Fuzzy Duckling is to give you a few simple tips on watercolor. We want to keep it fun and we want to keep it fairly inexpensive because watercolors can be expensive but there are ways to do this you know on a budget and so that's what we're going to try to do we're going to go simple and we're going to go inexpensive and none of these will take you long to do and I hope maybe through this you can um, find the joy of watercolor and get that same feeling I'm getting as I'm reviving my desire and my joy for this media. Now watercolor, it's different than most, well, any other media I've ever used. Watercolor has a mind of its own. And I think part of our problem is if you've come from using markers or you've come from using colored pencils or you have come from using acrylics and oil, you just jump right in and think, well watercolor can't be that different. I will do it the same way. And that is a recipe for absolute disaster. Watercolor has its own mind. You do not do it like anything else that I have run across. So you just have to learn about the beast called watercolor. Use its craziness to create beautiful things. So let me give you a tip on a couple things you will need. And obviously you will need watercolors. Now good professional watercolors are very expensive and these are the types of paints people use if they're going to hang it on the wall sell their work you know um, those kind of people that they're professionals at this stage we're not professionals and most of what we do is just for fun and we're going to put it in our art journal or in our scrapbook or we might hang it up on our own wall but at this stage we don't need expensive watercolors in fact, since here on the Fuzzy Duckling, I like to use supplies that you can go down to your local store, like a Walmart, and get almost all the supplies you need. 
And so, although I have a beautiful set of more expensive watercolors that my husband gave me, and they're wonderful, you can't just go down to your local store and pick these up. You'll need to order them on Amazon or go to a craft store like Michael's or Hobby Lobby. But what we're going to use today, go down to your local Walmart, maybe even your local pharmacy. Pick you up some Crayola watercolors. This picture that we're going to work on, see if I can get that here, we can see it well. I made sure that Crayola will work. This was done with your very inexpensive Crayola watercolors. And you know there is no problem learning or using even longer than while you're learning this media. Yes, they're more inexpensive. There's not as much um, pigment in them as in your expensive watercolors. But they're wonderful to learn on and they will do some wacky things because they are cheaper. But you know what? Figure out what those wacky things are and then use them. As you can see here, now this is to my inability somewhat. I have a few little streaks here. Now these dots I wanted there on purpose. And I don't even mind these streaks. This is a flamingo. He's standing in water. I don't care if it looks like. In fact, I planned for this to look like there's water all over. I wanted it to look like that. I did some techniques to make it look like that, which I'm going to show you. And they are super easy techniques. Anybody should be able to do this. So, you might even have some of these hanging around if, you're, if your kids have been to school. I think they ask that they buy these paints like every year. Now, I will say, some of your super cheap ones, and I haven't tried them all. I would suggest you just don't go to the dollar store and pick up a set for a dollar. This probably, I think, cost me two or three dollars because this is a larger set. You don't have to get the large set. Some of them just have a single line of colors, and we can work with that. But at least, at least get the Crayola brand because we know that works pretty well. Then you'll need some paper. And unfortunately, although I have done almost 100% of the art on the fuzzy duckling with printer paper, because that's what people have on hand, that won't work well for watercolors. I don't know if you've ever spilled your coffee or spilled a Coke on printer paper, but if you have, you've seen what happens. It kind of turns to a wrinkled mush. And um, watercolors use water and too much water on print, printer paper makes quite the mess so you will have to pick up some more heavy duty paper and there's two kinds you can get and I bought both of these at my local Walmart Let's see if I can get this under here you can use a mixed media paper this this what I use is a Canson and this is what um, let's see if I can get it here Walmart sells in my area this is what they call a 98 pound paper. And don't even worry about what that means. It's just that the more poundage, the better it is for watercolor. And this, this works. You can get you some of this. But I would suggest if you want to keep working on learning how to watercolor, go ahead and buy this stuff. It is watercolor paper. It's made specially to paint with watercolors and it's a hundred and forty pounds so it is a lot heavier it's almost like cardboard much heavier even than the, than your mixed media paper and tremendously heavier than sketchbook paper and like printer paper you won't want to watercolor on uh, your sketchbook paper it's just not made to tolerate water so those are two things you definitely will need to do this project. You will need the paint. And I didn't check to see what they are costing currently. Two or three dollars probably. And I don't remember what this cost, but this is not expensive. It's it's I got this at Walmart. So you will need one more thing. And yes, usually these sets of paint will come with a brush. And that is one complaint I have. The brushes are usually terrible. 
So I suggest you go into the art, de art department, again at Walmart, and lots of times you can find sets of brushes that have all kinds of brushes in them. Okay. There's all kinds of brushes. They make brushes for all different kind of media. There's brushes for oil painting, and those are totally different than the brushes for watercolor. So you can't just grab any brush that you have on hand. And I think that was one of the problems I had many years ago when I tried to learn how to watercolor because I had been doing oils and the brushes are totally different. And I don't know, I'll see if I can show you. Here is an oil painting brush. In fact, this brush is ancient. I have had this thing for years. It shows its wear and tear. It works great for oils. So you can see how stiff it is. It's like pig bristle or something. But uh, for water coloring, you need something super soft, like squirrel hair. <laughs> anyway, this is kind of typical and probably not as good. I should have grabbed one of what you'll get. And if you notice, if the brush in your set gets wider and wider at the bottom, and when you dip it in water, you can't make it come to a point, it's not going to work well. You need a brush that can come to a good point. In fact, I have a brush over here that shows that very well. This is a brand new brush. Look at that point it comes to. You need your watercolor brush to be able to come to that point. Because of that, you can paint very precise, thin lines, or with a little more pressure, you can get those lines thicker and fatter. So you can use that one brush well for about everything. I notice this little guy needs a little bit of a trim. He has one out here that's not where it should be. We'll worry about that later. Now I like a brush. This is one of my favorite brushes right here. Now I'll admit this one wasn't the most expensive of brushes. And it had some stray hairs out here. Have you ever seen someone with eyebrows that you want to go yank some of them out of? Well, some of these brushes do the same thing. And if they haven't been cared for well, they'll get these little stray hairs out. And when you go down and paint, you'll get a line here, but you'll get all these teeny tiny lines out at the side. Uh, you don't want that. In fact, on this brush, I had so many little stray hairs. I came along and trimmed a little bit with my scissors and got rid of those. Now when this gets wet, and I'll show you that in a little bit, this will come to a nice little point. And I like this size. Let's see if it tells me. It says it's a size 5 for this picture. We're not going to do big, big pictures. This is a nice little brush, and the brand for this is Westwater Enterprises. Pretty sure I got this set at Walmart for next to nothing. And yes, if you're going to get into watercolors, you will want to eventually buy you some really good brushes. You can also get teeny, teeny, tiny ones, which for tiny little work, but we won't need that today. All you'll need today is one about this size that is made for watercolor. That was a long explanation, wasn't it? The next step, if you've got your paper, you've got a brush, you'll need water. And um, I use a crazy thing that looks like this. It's actually this is an old piece off of a pump. <laughs> Notice it has a separate little um, container thing inside of it. When I put water in this, this gives me two containers of water. I use this outside part to clean my brushes. The inside part to hold clean water. Now what you will probably need to do is just go get two jars, two glasses, some kind of containers to hold water. You'll want one for dirty water where you clean your brush off and you'll want one for clean water that you dip into your paints and use for the clean work. But I like this crazy thing. You will need one, well two more things. Good old paper towels. Because we constantly dab our brushes off on paper towels. Sometimes we even dab our paintings. And <laughs> painter's tape because we will tape our piece of paper down when we start to get it wet because if we don't our paper tends even watercolor paper can tend to get a little foldy, bendy crumpled, rumpled it works best 
if we tape it down. Before you start, I want you to take your piece of watercolor paper Draw a line halfway across and halfway down. That will make four pieces that is six inches by four and a half inches to do your pictures on. Now, especially as a beginner, I started out doing fairly good size watercolor pictures. Nothing ever told me. Cut these down and start smaller. And it takes a while to finish the big pictures and there's techniques to learn on doing big patches of watercolor and that's discouraging cut this into four pieces if you have this size of paper and if you buy most watercolor pads they will be about 9 by 12 otherwise you know judge it by the piece of paper you have how many pieces you should make this in but at least get down to like a four by six or these are four and a half by six and you'll get four, obviously, out of every sheet of paper. Now, and again, take a look at this. This was done on a four by four and a half by six inch piece of paper. And you can quickly get one of these done. And then, like I've been doing since I discovered this little trick of working on smaller pieces, you can sit, sit down any time of the day and just do one right off and practice or practice a technique. You're not wasting a lot of paper. You're not wasting a lot of watercolor paint and you're not wasting your time. Just get a little spot where you can set up your paints and your papers and leave it there so that you can just sit down at any time. If you have 15 minutes, you can sit down and paint and practice. So. The first thing you need to do is if you have not seen our how to draw a flamingo video you might want to go there although this will probably be easy enough for you to do if you haven't we're just going to draw the head and part of the neck of our flamingo instead of the whole bird so this is really easy to draw but if you go back or you have done the draw a flamingo video this will be especially easy for you set this aside now I see we have gone oh several minutes already so I think we're going to stop here this will be our part one and then we will take up how to draw our flamingo in part two so we'll be right back with part two